are people dying and suffering needlessly because of all these committees and all these rules? And what happens if people just start saying, like, fuck you, I'm going to do it anyway? And what if people start getting cured? Josiah Zayner is a scientist, biohacker, and founder of the biotech company The Odin, which supplies low-cost CRISPR kits for the consumer market. CRISPR is a gene editing system that allows scientists to modify the DNA of organisms ranging from bacteria to plants and fungus to human beings. We visited Zayner in his garage lab to discuss the implications of bringing CRISPR to the masses and why he believes that unregulated decentralized experimentation will lead to the next giant scientific breakthroughs. Give me a little bit of your background. How did you learn to do this kind of thing in the first place and, and what got you interested in biohacking? It all started probably about eight years ago when I was in graduate school over in Chicago. And I always wanted to do these experiments. And my boss, you know, he's got to write grants and get data for the grants and all this stuff. And he would always be like, eh, I don't really know. That doesn't seem too interesting. Why don't you do what I say? Because it's the best idea ever. At one point you worked at NASA actually, and now you're working out of your garage and your kitchen. Why is that? Actually, when I told my mom that I was going to leave NASA, she kind of freaked out. She was like, why would you ever leave NASA? You know, because I guess it's most people's dream to work there and it kind of was almost my dream at one point in time to work at NASA and sure. be, be a scientist, you know, work on getting us to Mars and all this stuff. And then I wound up there and it's all those things that people say about the government that like you have to fill out a million forms for everything, they waste a ton of money and nobody actually does any work. They actually told me one time like, you know what? You work every day in the lab and that's really dangerous because you could get injured or something like that. So can you take like one day a week and not work and like go in your office and like maybe answer emails or something like that? I'm like, you're literally asking me not to work one day a week. <laughs> like, what? And that's when I kind of figured out like the government sometimes doesn't make sense. It's yeah. just like do this because somebody said so what were the kinds of things that you were proposing that you wanted to do that your boss was kind of eh, i don't know about that i wanted to see how i could interface this protein this genetically engineered protein from oat from the oat plant mm -hmm. how could it how i could interface it with like electronics so it's this light responsive protein and i wanted to interface it with electronics and like build a little device that's kind of cool but there's really like I guess some would say no scientific like outcome of that, right? You can't, you can't write a paper. There's really no hypotheses I'm testing. I'm just trying to build something cool. <laughs> and I was like, well, I want to work on these things. I want to do these things. How do I make it so I can do that? So I started looking around for supplies and I found out you can buy all this stuff online, but it's like at all these different places and it takes you forever just to find the best price or where to get this or where to get that. And that's kind of when was the genesis for the Odin. Could you describe uh, the Odin project a little bit? What exactly is your product? We're trying to democratize science, basically. It's always been, you know, you have to have a PhD or you have to have certain skill set, and then you have to convince somebody who has a PhD to let you work with them. What if everybody could do science? Taking tools like CRISPR, that are these cutting edge genetic engineering tools. Oh wow, this is like the hottest science that somebody can do. And then saying, look, we're making it simple enough that almost anybody could do it. What's an example of someone who buys one of your kits might use it for? How to engineer yeast for beers. So he's editing different genes in the genome, things that give it flavor, to give it smells and all these other things to make his own custom beers so he can take the CRISPR technology and make it applied to basically like something I mean, I drink beer a lot, so something people experience like every day. And what do you say to people who might think, okay, you're trying to democratize science, that's really dangerous. What you're selling is basically little Pandora's boxes uh, that uh, any Yahoo can open and kind of ruin the world with. First I respond by asking the person, you know, do you know what DNA is? And if they say no, then usually the conversation ends there. <laughs> or if they struggle to explain it. But the, the reality is, 
it's so hard to engineer something to be dangerous. Mm. And these kits also, they don't allow people to engineer things like viruses or something like that. But if you think about the bacteria, the bacteria that are dangerous have evolved over you know, billions of years and it's required bacteria covering the planet just to get some of these toxins that would affect mammals or other organisms. Just not, you know, anything that should be worried about or even thought about. How do you feel about the government regulation around this area of science? Right now, because like biohackers and people doing science at home is so new, there's really not much regulation at the moment. Mm -hmm. People have a lot of freedom to do. Some people are even getting mad, academics and people working in universities because they have institutional guidelines that they have to follow. So the government doesn't impose certain guidelines on research, but the institution, the university, imposes guidelines on those researchers then. Which, if you're working in your garage, your, your institution is basically you and maybe your friends and sure. stuff like that. So there's no regulation. I think that the government probably in the future sometime will try to regulate it. I'm kind of, I don't know, I guess one of those people who, who just doesn't want any regulation. I'm just like, I, mm -hmm. just let people do science. What do you think would be some of the drawbacks if the government did come in with a heavy hand to start regulating this? I think innovation is the number one. If you compare it to like when computers first started getting big and people were just, you know, coding up stuff and hacking away on their computers at home, Linux operating system came out of it. So much free open source software that we all use now came out of it and that innovation just spread everywhere. You used biohacking and self-experimentation to actually improve a problem in your own life. Could you talk about that a little bit? I have lots of gastrointestinal problems, you know, lots of nasty stuff. I have to go to the, go four times a day, blood coming out, other gross mm -hmm. stuff that is not good, has really kind of limited some, some areas of m my life. I did like a full body microbiome transplant. So microbiome is the bacteria that are all over your body, in your gut, on your skin, in your nose, mouth, everything. I found a healthy donor. I took, you know, poop samples and other samples, skin samples and all these things and basically sterilized myself with antibiotics and transplanted his microbiome to my body. And afterward, uh, a lot of the problems I had just cleared up. When you say you transferred uh, his sample to your body, how does that work? For fecal samples, yeah. it got fresh samples. Um, told him not to eat, eat anything crazy. Uh, and then basically put those in capsules and you just take them, right? You know, not everyone is gonna be willing to like put their buddy's shit in a pill and eat it. So what uh, can we learn from this experience? <laughs> like what's the wider lesson? There are a lot of technologies like CRISPR that aren't 100% proven, but can be used to treat people. Mm. Or like fecal transplants that aren't proven because Good luck getting institutional approval. Are we lagging behind because of all these committees and all these rules? Are people dying and suffering needlessly because of all these committees and all these rules? And what happens if people just start saying like, fuck you, I'm gonna do it anyway. Hmm. And what if people start getting cured? Where do you see this going in five or 10 years? Do you have any speculation? If you ask people like, what, what would people do with electricity? You know, oh, they get to light their house. Oh, candles are just fine, right? And now like, look at, look at this. Look at what we can do with electricity. And same thing with computers. When they were in huge computers and labs, everybody was like, oh, what will people do with computers? Oh. Who knows? And now we have like freaking computer in our pocket with like all the world's knowledge that we have access to. Like who could have predicted that? Nobody. So I just like to think like there are people out there that are going to blow our minds. And I don't quite know what they're going to do yet, but I know they're going to blow our minds. But by giving them the access to these tools, to this technology, I think that's the major way it's going to happen. Let's give people knowledge and let them change the world. Josiah Zayner, thank you very much for talking to us. Yeah, it was nice talking to you also. For Reason TV, I'm Zach Weissmuller. To think that we can't make organisms that are more efficient than existing, I don't think is, is correct because nature doesn't have DNA laser printers and we do. One of the reasons that various commenters and the authorities tend to be anxious about the future is that things are, in a sense, getting out of control.